welcome to the Educational e platform for training in Neurological Physiotherapy of the Faculty of Physiotherapy of the University of Valencia, Spain. My name is Anna Arnal, I am a physiotherapist specialised in Neurological Physiotherapy and teacher at the Faculty of Physiotherapy of the University of Valencia. In this video we will discuss about the neurophysiological basis of Parkinson's disease in order to have a better understanding of its clinical characteristics. If Parkinson's disease has an idiopathic origin, it is characterised by being neurodegenerative, that is, there is cell death that affects dopaminergic neurons, named after the neurotransmitter which they secrete, dopamine, and the area of the central nervous system mainly affected by this neurodegeneration is one of the four basal ganglia, specifically the compact portion of the substantia nigra, which consequently affects communication with other centres of the cerebral cortex. It is progressive since neurodegeneration continues to advance over time, and in addition, the classic signs of the disease that initially begin in one side of the body end up affecting bilaterally. It is chronic, there is no cure for Parkinson's disease, and it is multisystemic, it produces motor and non-motor signs, being the motor signs those that are used for the diagnosis of the disease. These affect functional mobility and end up causing disability and dependence for a long time of life. As stated before, neurodegeneration in Parkinson's disease affects the communication of the basal ganglia circuit. We must remember that the basal ganglia are located in the midbrain and they are a set of grey matter nuclei, that is, they are accumulations of subcortical neuronal bodies. And it includes striatum, which are the caudate nucleus and putamen separated by the internal capsule, globus pallidus with its internal and external portion, and the substantia nigra composed of pars reticulata and pars compacta. This latter is the damage area in the Parkinson's disease. And then the subthalamic nucleus. In the slide we can see a diagram of the internal communication between basal ganglia with the respective neurotransmitters and its relationship with other structures of the central nervous system and directly with the thalamus and the cerebral cortex. The red arrows represent stimulating interactions and the grey ones, the inhibitory ones. As shown in the image of the left, the basal ganglia have an afferent information nucleus, which is the striatum. Through the nucleus, information is received from areas of the cerebral cortex. On the other hand, the exit point of the circuit is the internal globus pallidus and the reticulate substantia nigra, which communicates via the neurotransmitter GABA with the thalamus. That is, the final product of the basal ganglia circuit is the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA and it is through the increase or decrease in the production of this neurotransmitter that the basal ganglia will directly influence the activity of the thalamus and therefore on the cerebral cortex. As shown in the circuit, the basal ganglia have two communication pathways, one direct and one indirect. The direct pathway starting from the basal ganglia involves the transmission of GABA and other inhibitory neurotransmitters from the striatum to the internal globus pallidus and the reticulate substantia nigra, so the GABA activity on the thalamus is inhibited. On the contrary, the indirect pathway is made up of three differentiated segments, the striatum pale pathway, the pale subthalamic pathway, which are both GABAergic and inhibitory, and the subthalamic pale pathway, glutamergic and stimulating, that is, its final action on the globus pallidus interna substantia nigra reticulate complex is excitatory, which means that the indirect pathway inhibits movements in the cerebral cortex, while the direct pathway facilitates it. The direct and indirect path, when kept in balance, facilitate or in in inhibitate thalamic cortical communications. As shown in the image, the dopamine is in a key position for the modulation of both pathways. This neurotransmitter is released at the striatum and exerts an opposite action on the direct and indirect pathways, depending on the dopaminergic receptor on which it acts. Now let's review 
the neurophysiological changes of the basal ganglia in Parkinson's disease. In the figure on the right, the misalignment in the communication of the basal ganglia is represented by the thinner or thicker arrows, depending on whether there is less or more activity, respectively, than in comparison with the normal circuit. It can be seen after the dopamine deficiency of the substantia nigra pars compacta towards the striatum, represented by the dotted arrows, an inactivity of the direct pathway develops, so the exit nucleus is not being inhibited, and on the other hand, the direct pathway generates an overstimulation of this exit nucleus. If the internal globus pallidus and the reticular substantia nigra are hyperactivated, its inhibitory function on the thalamus is much greater than a normal situation, and therefore the thalamus cerebral cortex communication will also be reduced. With a more simple view, it could be said that in Parkinson's disease there is an overactivity of the subthalamic nucleus and consequently globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticulata complex. The sequence of events that lead to these alterations can be summarized as follows. The generation of the dopaminergic neurons of the substantia nigra compacta, which is reflected on a deficit of dopamine in the striatum. The direct pathway, striatum globus pallidus interna, is underactive and, as since it is a GABAergic pathway, the hyperfunction of globus pallidus interna substantia nigra reticulata complex is reinforced. In turn, there is an excessive inhibition of the neurons of the external globus pallidus and therefore a disinhibition of the subthalamic nucleus. The hyperactivity of the neurons of the subthalamic nucleus reinforces the hyperfunction of the internal globus pallidus reticulate substantia nigra complex. This imbalance between the direct and indirect pathways results in an excessive inhibition of thalamic neurons, which is why the reinforcement of the basal ganglia on the movements initiated by cortical neurons presents alterations. There is a growing flow of information in relation to the non-motor roles of the basal ganglia. This means that basal cortical communication is not only with areas of the motor cortex, but also with other cortical areas involved in other types of functions. This is why the different circuits that involve the cerebral cortex, the basal ganglia and the thalamus, and again the cerebral cortex, work as a circuit group, although anatomically detached. A motor, oculomotor, executive, associative and emotional circuit has been described. This means basal ganglia not only intervene in motor control, but has additional functions such as cognitive and emotional. The relationship of the basal ganglia with the cerebral cortex in the motor circuit is with the primary motor cortex, the supplementary motor area, premotor cortex and cingulate motor area. The ocular motor circuit has interaction with the ocular frontal area field, Broadman 8, and the supplementary ocular area. In relation to the executive associative circuit, the basal ganglia are related with the prefrontal dorsolateral lateral cortex and the lateral orbitofrontal cortex. And finally, in the emotional circuit, the basal ganglia are related to the cingulate anterior area and the orbitofrontal medial cortex. Therefore, Parkinson's disease has a multisystemic characteristics, with patients suffering mainly from a motor disorder, but also from cognitive or psychiatric, emotional, autonomic and sleep disorders. Finally, if you are interested in expanding the information, we present here the references we have used. Thank you for using this digital e-platform.